this video is sponsored by me. We got some good old shit for you guys, along with some very questionable things as well. Okay. Oh boy, everyone is sad. All campaigns eventually hit their low. So let's see how low we can go. Now, last time. Didn't murder and met a new NPC. <laughs> learned about Elowen's people. Oh good, start that juicy part. Got new outfits. Found out the frog had the final shard. Are you, are you joking? And finally, Sips emotionally punched one of his best friends in the gut. So yeah, he walks, playing the conversation over and over again in his head till he hears, Hey, never call Gothica defective again or what? You'll kill me? You need to keep control of yourself as your emotions have cost us five Percent. Sips looks down at his arm to see, yeah, it's grown to 65%. You want this to be worth it, right? Then focus. Right. Focus. And keep moving. Sips walks off towards the camp, where he waits to find the large toad alone. While it sleeps, he reaches out, grabbing its head, making an opposed will save, and... Yeah, it had a crystal. So... One down, two to go. Now on a less dramatic note, Jack goes to check up on how Masika is doing. He learns that her sickness was actually caused by her four claimer augmentations rejecting her body. Kind of like an allergic reaction. So Jack walks in to see Masika. Are you here to kill me? Well, hello to you too. Because your tiny baby hands won't work. Perhaps this. Whoa, okay, no, I'm, I'm not here to kill you. Also, how do you keep getting knives? I have many. Noted. Why don't we just... There. Okay. So, how are you feeling? Looking for weaknesses. No, I just... I'm just worried. Well, I'm always worried. Look, the other four claimers told me why you're sick. Did you know? It's okay if you don't want to talk about it. I'm defective. I knew for a while. Then, on a hunt, others found out. And when my squad was attacked, it was the logical conclusion to leave me behind and take my power crystal, as it was my last value as a foreclaimer. That's terrible! Why? It was the only decision to make. I could not walk, and I was defective. You're not defective. I think you just needed help. A foreclaimer who is unable to use their augmentations is a waste and best did. And I disagree. Look, I I'm supposed to be an adventurer, but really, I'm a coward. Got no magic, fighting skills. I'm just a normal guy. But I have value. I know my weaknesses, but I also know my strengths. And what if your strengths are broken? Then we find new ones. Absolutely ridiculous. Your logic makes no sense. And you talk strange. Ah, but you are interesting. Eh? Huh? Jack? I need to talk to you. Alone. The next morning comes around, and the group is, well, not great. The basic plan right now is to go check out the other four claimer base, learn their intentions, and then head back to discuss what's gonna happen. Even though we have a pretty good idea. So Jack sips Gothi and Arena. Uh, yeah, I'm not going. What? what? 
I mean, once you've seen, like, one Four Claimer base, you've seen them all. I'd just rather stay here. Plus, I can keep an eye on Masika. Are you sure? Let her stay. Not like we need her right now. Yeah, Gothi. I'm sure. Okay. We'll be back. We head out on the dragon and fly towards the Four Claimer City which we soon spot on top of a cliff with multiple layers. Leaving the dragon at a distance, we approach the bottom of this cliff to find a gate with guards. Now, with a few high rolls and revealing Gothi as a long-lost princess of the four climbers, the guards agree to take us to their emperor. As one of the four climbers' many flaws is their curiosity. The large metal doors open to an elevator that climbs up. As we ascend, we see this cliff has been hollowed out. Elevators and stairs line the walls along with balconies. A complex system of labs and rooms created to accommodate what looks like a large collection of knowledge. A library as tall as a skyscraper, from base to ceiling of books, scrolls, and anything they deem valuable. It's impressive, yet unnerving. The light hits us as we arrive at doors that lead into the city of Rachaka. It's located on multiple plateaus that look over the jungle, which is in a large canyon. It seems to have broken through the rock as the rest of the horizon is flat and cold. Rachaka's buildings vary in size, all following similar designs, but built for different purposes. The people walk around as if on a mission, precise movements to get them to their destination efficiently. They are equipped with different power crystals than Gothi's, of blues and pinks. They look at us not with animosity, but curiosity. Like someone staring at an animal at the zoo. We are led to a large pristine building where we enter into a dimly lit room. Luminescent mosaics of the sky decorate the ceiling. Heavy footsteps echo throughout the halls as a large man walks in, tall, broad, and rigid. He wears a crown on his head along with immaculate armor, but also two sets of four-claimer lines, blue and pink. This four-claimer is Emperor Godric, the third, and our next NPC. The air becomes heavy. You're his grandson. And you're supposed to be dead. Gothica, dear soul. But by your power crystal, necklace, and mask, I gather you aren't an imposter. So, what brings me the honor of speaking to the past? We've come to talk. Just talk. Then this is how it's going to work. You all will be allowed to ask me one question. Each. And I will be allowed to ask one question to each of you. Just one question. It's all I'll need. Don't waste my time. And how do we know if you're telling the truth? You don't. But four claimers do not lie. It's inefficient. So, what do you wish to know? A chill runs through all of us as we realize we're in a test. How do four climbers work together without empathy? Empathy is the core of all societies. Weak societies. Empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings of others. A building block of morality so that lines may be drawn to prevent harm to others. But with that, you lose something. You lose the ability to push beyond morality. Each foreclaimer is individually driven with the ideals of progression. 
to become the ultimate being through science without limits. However, to achieve this, we cannot do it alone. We need resources and others. So naturally, we must rely on each other, simply as a tool. Do you feel empathy for your clothing or weapon? No. These are things to be used. Each foreclaimer understands their value to the cause. Value. Yes. For example, Godric gestures to two guards to come and join him. This foreclaimer has been augmented for 243 years, while the other, 20. Who has more value? I, I can't say. Of course you can't. You're not a foreclaimer. Well, dear soul, this one's easy. I'm not answering that. And that is why you were never fit to rule. Because a true ruler would say 243 years of experience is harder to replace than 20. What is 20 years to a four claimer? Nothing. But simply killing a four claimer for no reason would be a waste. However, perhaps his death would have more value if I were to feed him to my shark hound. Just to prove a point. And that's not a point that has to be made. But we are speaking hypotheticals, of course. So, what other questions do you have for me? Are you going to start a war? With whom? As I am curious on who you think could possibly challenge us. Or more interestingly, who do you fear we would be a threat to? Stella's children. The other four claimers. They are not four claimers. And I would never waste resources on such pathetic and defective creatures. So no, war is not a goal of mine at the moment. Then what is? The sun. You're gonna make another god. No, we have learned from our ancestors' mistakes. Your generation was fearful weak and didn't push our society far enough. I am the leader that sees what the four claimers truly can become. By extracting the power of the sun, I will bring us to our new evolution. To truly ascend beyond mere mortals and gods. Progression without limits. Because we can. Because no one else will. That has always been our goal, and I, by example, will accelerate it. No matter the cost. Godric pulls back his shirt to reveal a second power crystal, replacing his heart. Two. How is that amount of energy not killing you? Like I said. Your generation was weak. Now my question is I only have one. How? 
How have you lived this long, dear soul? 2,836 years, yet you are still alive. And if you do not wish to give the answer, then I will simply take it by taking you apart, piece by piece, until I find my answer. There's no need. It was a gift from a god. Which god? Zonu. Who cared for me? Ridiculous. Ridiculous! Do not lie! Four clamors don't lie. It's inefficient. Correct. <laughs> huh. Well, then you have given me what I wanted. As this confirms that with the power of this sun, four claimers will achieve immortality. So, thank you. I'm done here. You all will leave, as you are no longer valuable to me. Just like that. Yes. Why? Do you think I would imprison you? experiment and test on you out of curiosity. I would not waste resources on creatures so insignificant. My curiosity is on what you will do. Will you come back to challenge me? Good. I welcome it as it will only prove my generation is far more superior than the one you left behind. So go, gather your strength, and live in your false hope, as defectives do. And with that, we leave. Walking through the city, many emotions swirl in our heads, until we hear, uh, we we can't leave yet. I, I gotta go see the library. Try the food. It's not a tourist destination. Yeah, we're done here, Jack. Uh, but wait, what about talking to the locals? Jack, you're acting more nervous than usual, and that's quite a feat. What? Me? No. I just sips. I just think we should stay. Arena's leaving to the portal. What? I was distracted. I didn't notice. Crap! What is it? Arena's being difficult. I'll be right back. Well, I'm coming. Uh, yeah, me too. You know what? Sure. Why not? I think this is it. God, everything just looks like rocks. And more rocks. Hmm. Well, thanks for guiding me here. I appreciate you. Hmm. Okay, in and out. Should be fine. Eh, that's future me's problem. Arena! Oop, that's a now problem. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you forget? I can control a giant goddamn dragon! No, I just hoped he wouldn't use it. Hmm. I know you're down there. Now we're doing this the easy way. Oh boy, we're doing this the hard way. Now, sneeze! And with that, a large light erupts from within the jungle with a powerful blast that sends energy waves radiating out as Arena has successfully opened the portal. Crap. Hmm, forgot about the deadly blast. At least we didn't die. Look, I'm trying! Oh, the dragon might kill us though. Come out, Arena. Do you really want to do this? Do you? Hand it over. No, I'm stopping this. Why? 
And why do you care? Because I care about you! Look, someone suggested that I should try to think about helping someone other than myself. So I'm trying now. We're not doing this. I won't ask again. You know what's funny? This small crystal has given me magical girl powers, like flight, weapons, rat outfits. But you know the one thing it didn't give me? My really great throwing arm. Jack Masika, no! At that moment, Arena throws the ring high in the air over Sips. He makes a reflex save and just misses as it flies and lands into Jack's hands, who turns and runs into the portal with Masika. Sips turns to go after the crystal, but is paralyzed as he feels something stopping him. It's himself. Why aren't you moving? You don't want to do it. Do you? Shut up. You don't know what I want. Do you? If you're not going to do something, then I will. At that moment, Zanu takes over three raptors who run straight into the portal. Hey, this is how it's going to go. We're doing this now. Either you grab Gothi's shard at this moment, or I kill whoever's on the other side of that portal. You're trying to threaten me by killing Jack. Not him. You wouldn't try me. You need help. Don't. Let's cut the crap. You're all over the place. One moment you're our friend, then you're our enemy. Which is it? I know this isn't what you want. Shut up! Then what is it that you want? Take away everything. All the pros and cons and genocide, no genocide, four claimers, us. Forget it all. What do you want? Sips. Yeah, what do you want? I... Well, what is it? What do you want? Sips! I want this to be over! I just wanted this to be over. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to do anything anymore. I just wanted to finally do something that would help. That would make my life worth it. In the end. And you couldn't even do that right. Sips. Do you trust me? Yeah. At that moment, Gothi's shadow casts over Sips as she lunges towards him, body quick, arm steady, and a hand with a crystal embedded deep into it. She reaches out and grabs Sips' head. With two rolls at the table, Zanu and Gothi make opposing will saves and... She... succeeds. <gasps> This video is sponsored by me. Welcome to the emotional whiplash part of the video, as I introduce you to Felix and the team's new questionable project, The Fool's Gold Dating Sim. Dice, death, and dating. Yeah, let's just like triple backflip over these emotions. Anyway, so yes, this is real, and no, it's not lewd. It's just stupid fun with dice rolling encounters and yeah. So all good things in D&D, dating sim. We have released the free demo, which you can download to check it out, along with maybe giving us some feedback. I've been enjoying everyone freaking out over Jack's muscles. This poor, sweaty man. Plus, with the feedback you guys have been giving us, we have decided we are going to go ahead and make it into a full game, because <coughs> fuck it. You can follow the progress of the game at Cryodon Games, our Discord, or our newsletter. And if you want to help support or whatever, you can go check out our other stuff like plushies, shirts, backer kit stuff. Links in the description down below. 
Oh, also, uh, I'm going to make a quick shout out to Rags Animations as he has made some amazing animated D&D videos about a campaign he has done with his friends. And Felix and I guest started in it and it was really fun. His <laughs> shit is so slick. So please maybe go check him out. Okay, now I'm done. I'm just going to just going to lay down. Yep.